want you to believe that. But it is the trustee in a Cesta KV trust that is the higher office, and the executor administrators are lower than that. Yeah? Interesting, Frank. Yeah. All right, let's go to the phone lines real quick. And we have uh, waiting again. Are you there? Um, hi. Oh. Um, I'm hi. Just, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm just curious if a person has laid up uh, uh, precious metals in, like, thinking that the economy was uh, going to collapse, what should that person do? Well, you're, you're holding that as a private asset, aren't you? It's so, insurance. Okay, you're, ho you're holding it as a private asset in anticipation of, of an impending, potentially an impending um, concern. You're, you're not actually creating your own currency with it, are you? No. Okay, well then you're fine. <laughs> okay, well you said that it, you stated that it should not be used in in lieu of uh, that, how would you say, the word money is such a bad term. Um, barter is the only uh, lawful way of exchanging goods and that, uh, you know, precious metals is a um, false god. Well, that's why I, I didn't say that holding gold or that bartering gold is is uh, is immoral. It's It's when... It's, it's when you're using it to underwrite currencies, so for very large groups of people and very large societies from a very large stockpile of private assets. And that's why I didn't mention private holdings of gold or, or um, the kind of issues you're dealing with. None of that is mentioned at all in what I said tonight. It's a good question, but that's why it's completely excluded because oh. it, it's... Yeah, it's not designed to, to hurt anyone that has their own precious metals as a, as a way of insurance at all. It's merely stating that right now, right this moment, the parasites are absolutely flat out trying to promote gold as returning as an underwriting so that they can collapse the currencies, cause mass recessions and regain control and, and wipe off their debts. Okay. But it's okay if we uh, <laughs> we do the same thing because we're no, not no, no, because you're, because you're not underwriting currency. Now, I mean, look, I mean, I, I've said this a few times. Necessity is what it is, isn't it? Yes. I mean, if you if you subscribe to the fact that that there is a certain biblical aspect to causing gold like salt to be rendered tasteless or worthless to these parasites, these people that worship it as their god. You would subscribe to that as a as a as a historic thing to eliminate their power, yeah. Right. But you still have to survive yourself, don't you? Yes. Well, there's nothing incompatible with what we've said, yeah. Right. So as long as the, as should I have gold and it's where they can't get it and it's not being it's not doing anything except sitting, it's worth it's as worthless as salt that was just sitting. Well, you know. For the, look, do I, do I think that the parasites will stop what they're doing? No. Do, is there a chance that they'll get a few currencies up with gold? Yes, at this point. I mean, they've got people in every aspect. They've got all the media under their thumb. They've got major parts of the military. They've got all the banks. So everything's looking at this point that the parasites can't be stopped except for their own stupidity and, and arrogance and incompetence. But... Um, in six months' time or 12 months' time or whenever what we are putting in place becomes more known to the point that people realise that gold can't be underwritten because it has always been abused, then it's only at that point that gold loses its value. But up until then, it probably will increase in value. So it's up to you. I mean, you do what you have to do to survive. That's part of competence, isn't it? It's part of standing up, yeah? Yeah. So good on you. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you for the good questions so far, everyone, and thank you for your participation. Uh, we have a next caller. Looks like I got the right one this time, waiting again. Are you there? 
Yeah, this is waiting again. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, I tuned into the call late. Can you give me the website address again, please? Yeah. Uh, one O N E hyphen heaven dot org. Uh, and a copy of this call will be on the university dot on info as well as talk show. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good on you. Yes. All right, back to, uh looks like Ron has another question. We'll get to Ron here. Hello, Ron. Hi, Frank. Ron? Several weeks ago, you had explained several uh, naturally occurring problems that, were, that would happen with Earth, you know, like earthquakes, volcanoes. You had suggested that we stay away from certain areas, right? Remember that? Yes. Um. Were you referring to the pass by of Planet X, or is there some other force happening that we're unaware of? Yeah, I know people talk about this Planet X um, issue, uh, and um, there are look, I mean, <clears throat> there are orbiting asteroids that are the size of large moons, and if you want to call Pluto, which is smaller than the moons of Jupiter, uh, a planet, then you can certainly call call some of the orbiting asteroids that um, orbit uh, anti-clockwise uh, around the Oak, Oak clouds, uh, Planet X. But uh, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a long theory. The, the, the principle we're dealing with with the Earth is the following. The enormous forces of the, the the Earth's core is a is a iron magneto. It it generates huge electromagnetic forces internally, and it interacts um, with the external forces. But there is an insulation of our crust, and our crust is the very very thin insulation between the external forces and maintaining the integrity of the magneto system that keeps our Earth a living planet. If the crust does not rotate on the same principle that a farmer would rotate their land, then the integrity of the crust will fail. And if the crust fails catastrophically, then literally you would see the breakup of the crust and the breakup of the atmosphere and the loss of the crust, the same as looking at the Mars, has lost uh, over time its, its, its crust. It was attacked by some catastrophic event and it lost its you know, part of its crust. So um, we, we would see that kind of catastrophic event and it would cause you know, incredible upheaval on the Earth and it would, would certainly cause the, the death of, of, of life on Earth, you know, of any higher life. So the Earth needs to rotate its crust relative to the core. We have this unfortunate uh, knowledge of, of the Earth. It comes through science, and science has its own political system. So we unfortunately get these models of Earth sometimes that give us the wrong idea. We think that there is one pole. You know, there is a pole for the, for the magnetic internals of the Earth, and there's a pole for the crust of the Earth. And they're connected, but they're separate. So the, the Earth gives us a hint in terms of where the crust is going to move by the mo motion of the magnetic North Pole to the true North Pole. And it only needs to shift by a factor of around 11, uh, 11 or 10 to say 12 degrees every 400 to 500,000 years in order to maintain the integrity of the crust. Now we are approaching a crust movement event, which is a natural preservation system and survival mechanism system of the Earth. It is a natural event. It is not a pole reversal. A pole reversal concept is as if the Earth is traveling down the highway at 100 miles an hour and decides to flick the transmission into reverse. Ron, what would that do to, if that was a car, what would it do? Well, it ripped the transmission apart. 
it would rip the transmission and and it would it would be smoke and mayhem, wouldn't it? It could even explode the car. Yeah. Yep, right through the floorboard. Right. Okay. So you can imagine what that event would do to the Earth if we were doing a pole reversal, right? Oh yeah. So if the purpose of the Earth is to preserve itself, and that unlike us and the parasite mind, the Earth is inherently logical, we are facing a crust movement event and not a pole reversal event. Does that explain it to you? Sure, but what is, what's all the hubbub about um, they installed a telescope down at the South Pole, they've repointed Hubble toward the South Pole. I mean, they're doing a lot of things that are kind of fishy. I'm just trying to piece it together, that's all. Well, in spite of their insanity, these are still very superstitious people. And if you're going to build large underground bunkers because you fear the worst, then that's what they've done. And, of course, one of the great <laughs> the great misdirections is there's a whole bunker complex under Denver, yeah? Yep. And they even sold that into the truth move by saying it's an alien base. And by, by getting that rumour out that it's an alien base, it basically made most people think that it's all stupidity. And But there is actually a base under the, under Denver. It just happens to be their base, yeah? Right. Okay. It's a FEMA centre or something. Well, they've got their their scenario is their scenario is that there will be mass death, mass upheaval, and that they have to you know factor for the worst. Um, but you know they they've thrived off disaster, so they've geared themselves for the worst. But that doesn't excuse the system. In an emergency, you know people have to deal with an emergency, but they put. America under an emergency under President Lincoln and they've never reversed it, have they? No, they haven't. So, you know, enough's enough. People will accept, you know, for survival we need to do what we need to do, but they're not going to use this again as an excuse to stay in power for another 500 years. Well, let's hope All right? Not. Let's hope no. the first cave in. Well, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Okay. Thank you. You there, Terry? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yep. There we go. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. I would like to go back to the chat real quick. Um, back to some of the uh, documents and things that are on the Acadian One Heaven. Uh, from a guest, we have, I've started reading Positive Law, they put man-made in parentheses, on One Heaven. How should capitalized words be treated as opposed to all lowercase words? For example, there are a lot of words that begin with a capitalized letter. How should uh, those be treated as far as interpretation of those words? Yeah, good question. Well, firstly, I don't make it easy because my discipline in, in maintaining proper case, lower case, and upper case is pretty... Well, upper case, okay, and lower case, but... Capitalization, as I'm sure you would agree, Terry, is not one of my strong suits. So I, I do tend to over, cap, uh, over proper case, and so capitalize the first letter. Um, it, it, it's the way to view it is there's, there's two things, two things at work here. Let's talk about um, the use of lowercase, um, proper case, and uppercase in terms of identification of objects and relationships in trust law and in um, contract law, property. So uppercase, we're talking about a, um, uh, a corporate body, a corporation. And, and uppercase has been, as a convention, largely reserved as the body corporate of a trust, otherwise known as the uh, corporation, for at least the last 100 years or so, or more than that, on tombstones, for 150 plus years. Uh, proper case is reserved for uh, positions, and title, and lowercase is is reserved for, if you like, the true name of the object. So, you know, if I'm talking about the flesh of Franco Collins, I would be in lowercase. If I'm talking about the office of man, it would be in proper case. And if I'm talking about the...